Okay. Did you take them back? I took one of them back. Okay, the Heaney Jones is not mine. <coughs> and I gave you the found one. Okay, they're all taken back except for that one that you're supposed to raise the Yeah, the one is. There's only two. There's Jimmy Jones and there's found, and I already gave you found. Hello? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes? Your clinical, the 698, if you withdraw, you withdraw from both. Right, 601 and 698. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, the online thing. Oh, it went out. Oh, there it went. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good evening. I see it's six o'clock. Let me make sure that we're recording.
Okay, we should be recording. Good evening. This is <clears throat> the town hall for mail 601. Uh, this is for add on and regular students. Uh, thank you for choosing Gardner Web and thank you for being with us tonight. I see we've got about 50 or so students. We've got a good many staff members with us tonight. Uh, staff members, I'm Dale Lamb. I'm the program coordinator. Uh, staff members, if you're with us tonight, I'll stop my share for a second. Let's see who we got with us tonight. I'm, I'm um, here, Dr. Lamb. Dr. Stedman's here. Dr. Sanders is here. Dr. Sanders is here, and I see Dr. Revis, and I see Dr. Hamill. Dr. 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 Todd. Crawford. Dr. Crawford's here. I've got three pages of pictures. Um, let's see. Dr. Bullis is here. <laughs> All right, yeah, I saw Dr. Bullis is here as well. So I think uh, both the add-on and the uh, the regular Mel's program are represented with all of our folks here tonight. Um, thank all of you for being with us. Thank all the professors for being with us as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and look at our agenda for the evening. Uh, let's see, here we go. Um, and so I wanna make sure to start with that everybody is in the right place. I had one student call today and I think they'd signed her up for 604. Uh, and she's an add-on and she doesn't even have 604. So if you are in the five semester master's program, you should be signed up in Blackboard for Mel 601 regular with either Dr. Church or Dr. Todd. You will also have a Mel 697 which is your internship <coughs> class shell, and you will eventually uh, have a shell that says clinical Dr. Bullis, and that's the shell that you'll work in mostly. That shell won't come for a few days until, until drop ad is done, but you should have a six. If you're in the regular five semester master's program, you should be signed up for mail 601, either Dr. Church or Dr. Todd, and you will have Dr. Bullis for the mail 697 shell. Um, Dr. Stedman, if you could catch the chat to make sure if we have any questions that come through. Um, all right, and so if you are in the three semester add-on licensure program, you will either be with Dr. Stedman, Dr. Revis, Dr. Crawford, Dr. Hamilton, Dr. Sanders, uh, did I miss anybody? Edmund Crawford, Sanders, Hamilton, Revis. There should be five of them. There's a lot more classes of those. There's actually six classes of those. You should be one of those, one of those and you'll have a male 601 add-on. You'll also have a male 698 internship shell that will become a clinical shell. And, and as I said, in a few days that you will work in. So make sure that you are in male 601. Whether you're, whether you're add-on or regular, um, you should be in MEL 601. And, and if you're in uh, MEL 601 Masters, you'll have a 697 shell for one credit hour. And if you're an add-on licensure, you will have a MEL 698 shell for two credit hours. So that's where you should be. So let's look at the requirements that you will have during the program. Now, these will seem overwhelming because they are. Uh, but we have people in place and a system in place to work you through this. We're very successful. About 86% of our students complete on time and about 96% complete eventually, but about 86% complete on time because we have a good program in place. Not only do you have an instructor, you have a paired coach that will coach you through most of these things that I have on this list. So if you're in the regular five semester program this semester, starting this semester, you will go spring, summer, fall, spring, summer. You will complete at the end in August of 2021. You will go five straight semesters. We have some question from time to time. What do we do in the summer? We just on going. We don't stop ever. We don't take breaks. We don't stop. We just keep going. So you will have class this spring. 
this summer, this fall, following spring and summer. Um, if you're in the three semester program, same way, you'll go spring, summer, fall, you'll be through before Christmas. Um, and so our semesters run consecutively. We do not take breaks. So if you're in 601 regular, so this semester you'll be required to do your 601 Blackboard coursework for your instructor to include your discussion boards, assignments, your case studies, and there will be one of those, and, and peer reviews of, of your colleagues' work. Um, the APSEL is the, the first of the six evidences in your task stream portfolio. As you all, I'm sure, know, you will not take an exam at the end of your program to get your license. You will have to submit a demonstration portfolio. That's why you have a coach to work with you on that task stream portfolio. It has six evidences in there, and they're not called artifacts, they're evidences. And then we have a separate folio for artifacts, which are themes that accompany those written evidences. And so you will have the app cell due. Um, you'll have to do your competency analysis and your dispositions in task stream. And we'll show you that starting probably about next week in your coaching session. Uh, task stream is not available to you yet because we have to wait until again after drop ad because we have to pay a large amount of money for that. But we will get to that in due time. In about two weeks, you'll be up and running in task stream. Uh, you will have 12 competencies due in your task stream competency folio, and we'll cover that in the coaching session as well. If you're in the three semester add on licensure program, you'll also have your 601. Blackboard coursework, and it'll be the same as the master's people. The difference is you will have two case studies and you will have two evidences due this semester since you're in a three semester program. And if you divide six by three, that means two. You have two evidences due every semester. You have the app cell and the app tell. That's applied <coughs> and analysis and action plan for student learning and uh, teacher empowerment in creating a professional development model in the app tail. It's applied analysis, uh, applied an action plan for teacher uh, empowerment and leadership is what the app tail stands for. But you'll have, you'll have those two and you'll do your competency analysis and your dispositions and you'll do 21 competencies in your folio of artifacts this semester since you have to do one full round each semester. Let me speak first to the clinical coaching process. All beginning 601 male students are assigned a clinical coach one and a clinical coach two. They're not to be confused. Your clinical coach one, and we call them that because they'll be the first one that you meet, will come out to your school. They will be emailing you, so be watching your email. And they'll have you negotiate a meeting between you, your, your coach from Gardner Webb, uh, and your principal or the assistant principal whichever administrator is uh, mentoring you during this process. And they will come out and thank you and them, and they will cover the things that you need to know, and they will cover the things that your principal needs to know. All your principal has to do is sign your internship log at the end of each semester. They don't have to, they don't have to log into TaskStream or Blackboard or do any of those kinds of things. We do all of that. Uh, now we do the mentoring part and get you through. So your clinical coach, one will come out and make sure you understand that you're in the right place, look at your blackboard, uh, hopefully help you with task stream and, and get you up and going. Now, they'll only visit you this semester unless you A, want another visit from them in, pre, in, in subsequent semesters, or if you move schools, they'll come back and visit you at your new school, or if you change administrators, they'll come out and, and meet your new administrator. Other than that, they'll just Zoom with you if you need them. So that's a clinical coach one. All right, and so I have kind of summarized that for you. They don't review any of your work in Task Stream or Blackboard. That's not their job. They are our meeting greet group and, and to work with you at your site if you need help there uh, with your clinical internship hours that you do there. You do 80, 80 hours in a clinical at your school each semester where you apprentice under an administrator, you do 80 clinical hours, they help with that part. Uh, and it tells you they meet with your site mentor. Um, they introduce the Black Blackboard internship shell. Um, 
They make sure that you've established a task stream account. Um, they cover as much as that as they can. They help you make sure that you've set up your competency folio and task stream, and they will share with you examples of where you get your artifacts, both open-ended um, and from your evidence. So that's what they do. Now, your clinical coach too is the person that is paired with your instructor for your class. For all of you in 601 Masters, that'll be Dr. Bullis. For those of you in 601 Add-on, that will be some combination of your instructors. They'll coach one another classes so that you'll have the five of them in combination. We try not to bring anybody else outside into 601. It gets too confusing. So your instructors will be your coaches as well. They'll just have different roles uh, when working with you. Uh, your 601 CC2, your clinical coach too, that, that coaches your work, does not visit your school. Uh, they partner with your instructor and they coach the entire class. So for example, if you're in Dr. Todd's class, Dr. Bullis will be your coach, everybody in the class. Um, if you're in Dr. Stedman's class, uh, was it Dr. Revis will be your coach. Um, everybody in the same class. It, the, the, the coaches and the instructors pair together for all the students in the class. Um, they coordinate the peer review process with the instructors. You have to review one another's work in discussion board and blackboard. Um, they'll give you comments. They'll work with you to improve your work to get it to a level. Please understand that we're going to work all of your evidences in blackboard. They'll eventually have to go to task stream where they'll be state graded based on the state grading rubric. Uh, and our folks know what that is. Um, we actually have one of the people that will be working with each of the groups that I've talked about, the regular and the add-on, one of those people is actually anonymously a state grader. Um, we don't tell you that, they don't tell you who the state graders are, um, but, but that person has served in that role. So we know what the rubrics are and we know what the coaches know what it will take to get you through that final state grading um, and what will be sent back for revision. But we generally don't have any problem with our students once they submit their work in task stream with it being sent back or it not being good enough because we'll put you through a process to get it good enough before it gets to the final grade. Um, your, that coach will work with you on your evidence work, they'll work with you on your artifact portfolio, they'll work with you um, on your dispositions and competency analysis and task stream, they'll make comments on your internship log and make sure you're getting uh, a varied group of experiences. Now we'll have a suggested list of experiences that you have to do everything on the list. So, you, so for example, if you're a regular master's student and you've got to do 80 hours a semester for five semesters, that's 400 hours. 365 of those can't be bus duty. I figure after you've done bus duty a time or two, you probably caught on to that. Um, the only thing you have to really remember uh, <clears throat> about bus duty is make sure you wear a coat long enough to cover you behind in cold weather. After that, you probably got it. Um, so we want to see a varied group of activities that you do. Um, and so they will look at your, your list of internship activities and make sure that you're staying on the state plan with with what you're doing during that 80 hours at your school. And they're not just having you do, answer the phone, put up mail and, and, and monitor the, the bus lot, that you get to do a lot more than just that. They'll also look at your, your competency folio and your log and make sure that everything is, is going well for you. We want you to have a quality experience with us, both in your class and in your clinical internship in your portfolio that gets submitted to the state for for it to get your license, but we also want you to have a quality experience at your school. We want that 80 hours that you spend, and that averages out to one hour a day per semester. We want that time to be spent wisely and, and not doing mundane things that the custodian couldn't get to. Uh, we want you to do leadership type things, technical things, and a little bit of supervision. Um, as I said, we have outside evaluators who will evaluate their, your work once it goes, gets through the blackboard process and gets to task stream, um, that person is anonymous and has no contact with you. Um, they don't site visit you, they don't coach you, they don't comment, they don't do Zoom sessions, they grade your work. 
Uh, they evaluate the final evidence narratives from the six evidences using the North Carolina standardized grading rubric from the scale handbook. That's the, the Mel's handbook that we use. Um, they will provide a comment if the final evidence narrative submitted to the task stream is sent back for revision. They will tell you why they sent it back. They'll also copy your coach and tell them why it was sent back. And your coach will work with you to get it back up to speed. Uh, I've been reminded by your CC1s, please check your guard to web email daily uh, to make sure that you catch those emails from your CC1 attempting to schedule your site visits. They've already started sending emails. Um, they're hoping to visit you within the first three weeks of the semester. So please make sure that, that you monitor your email. You know, one of the smart things that you could do is have it forwarded to your regular email um, or if, if, uh, make sure you have it on your phone. Uh, all right. Okay. Let me pause for just a second here and check my questions and see if there's anything that I've missed. Um, okay. Uh, how is attendance taken? Um, attendance at your attendance at the live sessions weekly. Um, you will have at least one, you'll have one class session every week for one hour, and you will have a coaching session if you're add on each of the first four weeks, and then it'll be every other week. And that's Tuesday, Thursday. You'll have class every Tuesday and then Thursday. Uh, the, the regular, they do that a little bit differently, but, but pretty much you'll have at least one class a week. Attendance is, is voluntary. Um, if you don't watch it, if you don't watch live, you have to watch the video that we'll post later. Uh, we, we can tell or we know who came. Uh, we, we know who did that. Um, when I say attendance is optional, live attendance is optional. But we know who came and who watched the video. And if you don't do one of those two things, you get counted uh, absent. So each week, you have the opportunity to watch the video live, or watch the, the system or the, the class live and participate, or you can watch the video. We get a, an attendance list from both of those. So we know who came and who did 75% attendance. And so um, you don't have to attend live. You can watch the video later from the YouTube link, but we also get a calculation on that. So we know who, who's been naughty and who's been nice, who showed up and who did 75%. Now you don't have to do it live, uh, but you gotta watch, if you don't come live, you gotta watch the video uh, every week and, and you gotta maintain that 75% attendance by watching or attending live. That's a good question. All right, so let's look at Blackboard. Put that away quickly. So this is what your Blackboard class shell will look like. Move that out of the way so I can see. All right. So this is what this is Dr. Stedman's shell, and um, he's got his course introduction. He's got his name. He's got how many points it's going to take, and you can simply click on my grades right here, and it will tell you. Mine will probably won't work since I'm not a student, but it would tell you. Um, what your point total is at any one time. And instructors can know what it is. And so here's the point system. Um, you can make about 4,000 points in the course, it takes 3750 to make an A and so forth. He's got his syllabus right here. He's got all of his dates. He's got his Zoom links for Tuesday nights and his Zoom, light, Zoom links for Thursday night coaching sessions. He's got his town hall, that was a link for tonight. He's got his links to the APA. Now, many of you have been used to doing APA 6th edition. The new 7th edition just came out. There's a lot of changes, and so we'll help you through that as well. Uh, your folks will, will coach you through that. The biggest change is instead of writing third-person active, I mean, excuse me, third-person active, you'll now write first-person active rather than third-person passive. Instead of saying the candidate Send an, email, send an email, you'll say, I sent an email. Uh, those kinds of things. And so make sure that you understand we do follow APA in our writing. These are writing intensive courses. The portfolio is 
narrative writing, but we have task and prompt, so you'll know exactly what to do. Your syllabus is here. Um, you'll have your Zoom teams that you'll work on to do peer reviews, and also your case study, your case study materials. Everything is, is here on the on this. Also, it has your weekly schedule. Tells you what you're gonna be doing every week. Uh, it has pacing in there as well. It has your assignment drop box. It has the, the task where you put your work in for it to be reviewed by your, by your, uh, your peers and by your instructor. It has the drop box when it's completed to get a grade from your instructor. Uh, and then it gets sent on the task stream a little bit later. Uh, your uh, task and prompts are in here. It tells you what to do exactly. You don't just have to start scratching your head trying to figure out what to write. We tell you exactly what to write. We give you examples, we give you templates to write it with. Fairly, if, if you can follow directions, it's, it's fairly simple. And so if you, this is an add-on shell um, and you know which one of these you're in based on this number right here, all of you will be in mail 601. If you're, if you're regular masters, you'll be in O, O3, or O5. They're odd numbered. If you are add-on, you'll be in a C even numbered section. C246, 8, 10, 12, 14. You'll be in one of those. Uh, so this is an add-on because it's a C and an even number. So they've got the app cell and the app tail. And they've got all the things that you're gonna do every week under the weekly tab. We've got all the materials you're gonna need. Um, and it's got your discussion board. This is where you upload work. You upload your, your contact information right there so you can share so that people on your team can get, can get in touch with you. It's very menu driven, very friendly. Uh, your instructors are, are all, um, they're wizards on Blackboard. They can, any problem you have, they can answer. If not, I never sleep. I'm old, so you can call or email me anytime and I can walk you through any Blackboard problem that you have. Uh, Blackboard is very menu driven and very, very easy to deal with. Everything is, I mean, it's just really right at your fingertips. Um, app cell tasks and prompts, you just click on those and it tells you exactly how to write them, what the scoring rubric is. We've got templates. A template is an actual already formatted document. You just write right in it if you want to do that. We've got examples, we've got helpful hints. We've got all kinds of really good stuff here to help you. So if, if you can follow directions and, and you can work and then you have your team, y'all can Zoom together. You know, you sign up, you get a free Zoom account and you can Zoom between one another for up to 40 minutes anytime you want to for free. Just use your Gardner Web username and I uh, email username and password, you can get a free, free, it doesn't cost you anything, a free account. You can use it up to 40, 45 minutes anytime you want to. You can Zoom with your peer group. Um, even when you don't have work to do, you can still Zoom with them. Uh, as I said, we'll be on a couple times a week. I will come on uh, with y'all uh, tomorrow night with the add-ons and I'll, and I'll be, I'll come on on Thursday night, some different groups. I'm always available. The folks that you've got, they are all been trained. They, they are all experts as well on Blackboard. You will not have problems with Blackboard in terms of unless it's down. You won't have problems with it because everybody knows how to use Blackboard. Everybody has been certified at, at the online level using Blackboard. Let me stop a second here before I go to task stream and see if there's anything under chat. All right. Y'all are getting those, thank you. Um, so this is what a this is what an add-on shell looks like. Now, let's see. This is Dr. Church's shell. He's got his laid out the same way, but you'll notice there's nothing here in terms of app tail. You only have the app cell if you're if you're a regular master, master student. Uh, he's got all the same things, got all the same weeks. Guys, last weekly schedule, his lesson plans, all that stuff is right here. 
It's all menu driven. Again, you'll have fewer things on the masters because you don't cover but one evidence rather than two this semester. That's the only difference. Once you get, once we get you started a couple of weeks in Blackboard and get you used to it and using the Blackboard shell, the class shell and the coaches shell, you'll get a clinical coaches shell as well. We'll then move you to task stream. Um, your task string DRF portfolio. And you can see all you do here is once you complete your app cell in, in Blackboard and we tell you, you bring it here and get it state evaluated. You do not work out of the task string shell. It's just a place, it's a repository to go and get your final state grade. Um, there'll be no comments, there'll be none of that stuff in your DRF portfolio. So as you can see, if you're an add-on license, your student this spring that says 19, but 20 will look exactly the same. You, you have to upload your app cell and your app tell. You have to complete your competency analysis at the end of the semester. And then, and then as soon as you get your shell, you can go ahead and do a self disposition of yourself. That's the four things that are due this semester, as I told you, in your DRF portfolio. About the third week or so, I'll come on and I'll teach you how to create a separate web folio to put artifacts, things in, like agendas, minutes, pictures, videos, all those kinds of things. We do it for two reasons. Well, actually three reasons. One, because CAPE and DPI says we have to, but you have to have artifacts that show you actually did some work. That's number one. Um, number two, it's a great, uh, since we do it in a separate folio, you can publish and share it with prospective employers. It is a game changer in terms of getting jobs when people can see the work you did. They don't want to read your evidence. Nobody wants to. Not even the people we pay to. We don't read those. Um, they're too long. But they love to see the work you did. That's real impressive, especially for older people like me that don't know this process. They think you're a wizard. When you give them one of these folios, they think, i got to hire that person. Look how smart they are. And the third reason why we like this competency folio to separate your artifacts out, if you will do it the way that we show you to do it and designate which of these are digital learning competencies, you can take this portfolio, this competency folio, uh, that's a separate folio and task string that looks like this, by the way. Let me, let me pull up one of my old ones um, that has. That, that has these in them, um, you can, and it will look like this when it's completed. Let me get it right quick. And this is one that was shared with me. I'm hoping y'all can all see this. So this one was shared with me. This is one of my former students. I just loved hers. And this is what you can share with the prospective employer. This is what, um, DPI and uh, CAPE require, but also if you do it this way and you designate which of these artifacts here as this brief explanation or digital learning competencies, you can get your renewal credits for your digital teaching and learning competencies and will save you a lot of money on that. So if somebody raised their hand, uh, if you'll just type it into chat, one of the professors will, will do it. Writing is hard to see. Okay. So, but this is, you when you do a, your, your competency folio of artifacts, it's not about the narrative, it's about the thing. And here are the things down here, the attachments, one of them's a video. Artifacts are things, they aren't narratives. You can't, you can't write your way to competency. You have to show us that you've done something. But this is part of what we will do inside of task stream as well, separate from your, your evidence narratives. And this is a, again, you get your money's worth on this one because it gets you your, your renewal credits for teaching and digital teaching and learning competencies. It's also about the best thing you can take to a job interview. And so we'll teach you how to do that in a few weeks as well. Again, not critical that you know this today, but that we'll, we'll do this. And so there's a lot of moving parts because those of you in the master's program, you're getting a master's degree and a license. And then those of you in the licensure program, you have your coursework and you have your licensure. So um, 
we're doing classwork and we're doing clinical and then you're you're doing clinical at, at your 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 school as well. Your pastoring portfolio will be the way that you submit what you submit to get to get your license to DPI. Uh, you cannot opt for an exam. There is no exam in North Carolina. Now, for you South Carolina folks, what we're going to do on that, for you South Carolina folks, um, you'll do the same thing. Um, we have a way for you to use your data. You will apply to North Carolina and get your license, and then you will apply reciprocally to South Carolina and take the practice. Now, the good news is the Praxis is embedded. All the things that you need to know on it are embedded in all the courses. We crosswalked cross all of those standards. Uh, all of our, not wood, all of our South Carolina people have passed 5412 Praxis for administration. We have not had one that's even come close to struggling. So, North Carolina people, you will submit your test. We will say at our licensure officer, well, two weeks after you complete your program, we'll submit your your uh, your portfolio and task stream. You'll get your license. Uh, South Carolina people, you hopefully in your last semester, you will take the praxis. Uh, and then once you get your North Carolina license, Seth will help you get your South Carolina license. And it's fairly easy and inexpensive. We do have a full-time licensure officer here that works with you to do this stuff. So it's not going to be really hard for you. It's all done online. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, we will we do this every day, and so we will certainly make sure that when we get you through, that you will get your license in North or South Carolina or both. Um, and so, you know, the first thing that I would do, and that's kind of brings me to I see I've already a couple minutes past that thirty minutes I promised. That's not unusual. Um, go to your class, go to your class shell and click on week one and see what there is to do and go ahead and get started and see when your first class is gonna be. Many of you will meet tomorrow night. Uh, I know one, a lot of the 601s meet on Tuesday night and then so they can coach on Thursday night. And I teach law and finance on Wednesday night so I can be with y'all on Monday and at, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you should have a um, you should have a good idea by now kind of what it is. Don't be overwhelmed. Um, I had a lady, you know, she got in and saw her shell today and she called and wanted to drop out already. Um, it's not for everybody, but if you will give us a couple of free weeks, it'll be fine. Um, again, 86% of our people, masters and add-ons, complete on time. And 96% complete usually in one extra semester. Life happens, sometimes you change school, sometimes things happen. Um, that, that's just the way it goes, but we, we rarely have people to drop out. Once they stay a couple of weeks and see, oh, these people have a system, um, then the instructors know what they're doing and we don't have a, you know, the, the people that you see on your screen working with you, these people are all active principals now or retired principal superintendents. Everybody you see has done this job and done it well. Um, we don't have anybody that we just flagged down on the street out here at one stoplight in Bowling Springs and said, hey, can you teach online? Uh, all these people have credentials. These are credentialed people um, that you have working with you who have done it all, myself included. Uh, I'm the oldest rat in the barn, so I have, <clears throat> I have scars all over me. But we've all done this. Our number one goal was for you to be successful. Uh, to complete on time, and, and for you to be successful and then get a job. Uh, which brings me to my last, um, my last part for the evening, and I won't bother to pull up all the, the, the proof on this. I'll just tell you. Gardner Webb this year, for the first time ever, uh, we're the top rated principal preparation program in North Carolina. We made number one. We beat Chapel Hill finally. Uh, you had to hire me from Chapel Hill to do it, but we did it. Um, it wasn't about me. It was about you. It was about our students. Uh, what got us that number one rating was how well our students do when they get their job. The five standards that the state counts in principal and assistant principal evaluation, standards one through five, 
Gardner Webb graduates in all five of those standards for the distinguished and accomplished categories, the two best, the two highest categories rating wise, we were significantly above the state average in all 10 of those uh, and those categories. We were the only college ever that's done that, ever, since they've been keeping this data. It, it's probably anomaly. We might not make it again next year, but we made it this year. And I say we, the folks that we graduated over the last three years, the folks who got jobs are the people who made it. Um, and we're, we're very proud of that. Not the one number one ranking in, in itself, but we're proud that the reason we got it is because our folks are doing well in the field. They are making a difference in the lives of children in, in, in the school. And that's, um, that's, what, that's what's exciting to me. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna stop and, and get some questions now. I saw a question just come by. Do add-ons attend graduation? You will attend a, uh, starting this spring, things have changed here a little bit. Um, you've been, add-ons have been coming to a reception after the graduation ceremony in Tucker Center. Uh, starting this spring, you will come to a School of Ed function before graduation. You. I don't know if they're going to have y'all come out and sit on the field or not. Um, we're going to go outside this spring. I'm not sure that uh, as somebody who, <laughs> who's been hit by lightning doing a high school graduation outside, I'm not sure it's a good idea, but hey, I'm game for anything. So we're going to go outside this spring. The university is going to have an outside graduation in the football stadium for the first time ever. Um, but School of Ed, we're going to do something earlier in that day. Um, and I'm guessing that you can attend the graduation. I don't know that you can. You haven't in the past. But you, we're definitely will have something for everybody that day, whether you're actually participating in the graduation ceremony or whether you're – everybody will participate in the School of Ed ceremony earlier in that afternoon. So, yes. And you do get certificates. I have one here. What did I do with it? You get a certificate that looks like a diploma. Um, this is a home, it's bigger than this one, but it looks like this. It's a one that's just like for a, fits in a frame like a diploma. It's from Jostin's, got the shining seal, the whole deal. Yes, you get one of those. And of course, those of you who get your master's, you get a real one that says diploma. But yes, you get all of that stuff. Um, Cynthia said she graduated outside with her bachelor's and it was hot. Yeah, I didn't mind the hot, but when the when the lightning hit the scoreboard, it was standing right behind me when I was giving the you know the final movie tassel over speech as high school principal that lit us all up. That was my least favorite part of that ceremony. But hey, it, you know the weather, weather may be great here uh, in May. Uh, I'm sure it'll be hot, but who knows? But I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm sure by the time that you folks get there down the road and the, the, the uh, add-ons in December, uh, it, I don't know, I guess it'll be cold. I guess we'll still I try to go outside. Um, and then you folks who are regular five semester, I don't know what we'll do with you because they're, they're talking about stopping summer graduation. They're talking about letting y'all walk in the May graduation and then just finish in the summer. I don't know how they're going to do that, but we do a lot. Of, we celebrate. We have a big time. We'll have something. We have certificates. We have diplomas. We give out goodie bags. Uh, we give out swag bags and t-shirts. Um, now, we have a big time. It'll be a lot of fun. We do pinning ceremonies. We, we give out stuff. Yeah, but you you will you will be honored. We will make sure that we honor you um, for having been with us during this time because uh, we're glad to have you. So the question is, do add-ons learn the same material as the regular masters? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the content of the courses is the same, but what differentiates you is add-ons, you both do the same portfolio Master's takes five, add-on does it in three. So you do twice as much on that, but the content's pretty much the same. Uh, where you get the break is you don't take 602 and 604. Um, you have to take the principal, you have to take law and finance, you have to take leadership. 
and the master students have to take curriculum and assessment as well. Uh, somebody said they're excited for this journey. I'm, I'm with you. I'm excited too. Um, uh, the 698 classes will probably be there later this week. Um, so yeah, the 698 is just your clinical class. All you need is your 601 shell right now. And they're still getting all that stuff squared away. They were still enrolling students at five when they went home today. I noticed we've only got 105. We still got about 25 more floating around somewhere, but we'll get those as well. All right. Um, the books are in your class shelves. Um, your coach will assist you both on your coaching sessions and face to face with past stream. Don't worry about that. It's really easy. Um, your books are in your class shell. Let me go back to that. That's a great question. Um, let me go back to here. Um, in your syllabus, there it is. Masters and add on. It has your books. Right there they are. You'll find them, they're the same. You've got Oven, APA manual, current issues with Aldridge and Pitch and Quinn. That's the same for everybody, whether you're add-on or masters, doesn't matter. Um, you got three textbooks and an APA manual. So again, they'll be in the syllabus in your course. All right, any other questions before we go? I see it's 45 minutes. Um, I'm on a uh, Zoom Pro account, so I don't have a time limit other than I hate to keep you longer than I have to. Some of the books are in e-format, yes. You can get hard copies, you can rent them from Amazon. You can order them from the Gardner Web Bookstore. These are fairly easily available books. They are not the $400 books either. These are, these are, we found some books. Let's see, I've got some here. Um, that's an awesome book. But these are not very expensive books. Um, but if you, they have used copies out there. You can do that with these. Um, they're, they're not, Amazon's got used. Our bookstore, um, they, these, these are not pro prohibitively priced books. All right. Faculty, before I go, is there anything that y'all would like to add? Just looking forward to meeting my students tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we all are. Sounds good. Anything else, Dr. Todd? I just reiterate that they don't need to get too excited. We will take them week by week and step by step and tell them what they need to do. And they don't need to really look at the whole big picture now. That will overwhelm you. But we break it down into very manageable tasks. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't need you don't need to get scared until you have to have me in 603. <laughs> that, that's when it that's when it, it goes off the rails. But uh, law and finance. <laughs> but until then it's gonna be fun. It really is. It's gonna be fun in 601 add-on uh, until and then 601 and 602 for the masters. It's gonna be fun until we hit 603, uh, but we'll have a good time anyway. Uh, no, it's it's Dr. Todd is exactly right. Don't 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 look at it in totality because it'll it'll be overwhelming. It'll it'll be good. We'll have we'll have a really we'll have a good time and, and it'll be step by step. And you'll be surprised how much you learn. And by the time you get to your next course, it'll just be old hat. You'll just breeze right through. It'll be good. Dr. Hamilton? I just am looking forward to a great semester. And thank you all for choosing Gardner Webb. You've chosen the very best. Dr. Lamb is a great leader. And we are all very fortunate to be here working with him. And um, Dr. Crawford and I will be working together, so our groups will be together. So we're excited about that collaboration. Mm -hmm. Dr. Crawford, do you have anything to add? Kick off in 15 minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Okay, I got it. All We're right. all thinking it. We're all thinking it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, I got to go. I got another Zoom in a few minutes. Everybody have a good time. Enjoy the ball game tonight. I'll see you probably tomorrow night or Thursday. Everybody have a good week. Thank you. Good night. Good night.